evening, uh, folks, those of you that have logged in to our webinar um, at seven o'clock. We're scheduled to start. Uh, I'm looking at our attendee list right now. I can see over 20 people have uh, logged in and the numbers are increasing here. So I think we're going to pause just for a minute or two and let the see if we can get uh, an additional attendee or two logged in. We have over 100 people who had registered for tonight's webinar. So let's just pause here just for one more minute or two before we get the show on the road. Kristen and Amy, what do you think? Should we get started? Yeah, I think so. Um, 7.02, let's go. All right. Well, wait, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Andrew Booker and I'm uh, glad to see you here tonight with us for Swaco's monthly webinar series from Waste to Resources. Tonight, we will be sharing a lot of information about composting at home. Uh, and I am joined tonight uh, by two experts in the field. If you can go to the next slide, please. We're thrilled to have Kristen Hilson with us from the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, Kristen is an expert in composting and in fact is going to share a lot of information about a number of things, a program that they operate that teaches residents in Franklin County a number of things they can do in their backyard to improve the environment, composting being one of them. And then we have uh, Swaco's own resident, composting expert, Amy Densborn, who is also going to share uh, quite a bit of information with us tonight. As I indicated, my name is Andrew Booker. I'm the programs manager at Swaco. I'm going to talk here just for a few minutes to get the presentation started, and I'll spend the rest of the evening uh, fielding some of your questions and sharing them with Kristen and, and Amy at, as we move forward. So that brings us to an important point. We can neither see you nor hear you. You are all muted and we don't have your webcams uh, authorized so we can simply see that you're here with us tonight. We've got over 27 people, looks like maybe pushing 30 people tonight, which is exciting. Um, but if you've never done GoTo, GoTo webinars, uh, I do want to pull, draw your attention to this control panel that you should have on your screen in addition to seeing Amy, Kristen, and myself and being able to hear us. Um, you should be have a control panel that you'll see. It may shrink up and it just looks like that uh, gray line that uh, is collapsed. And then if you click that little orange arrow, it will enlarge, it will um, uncollapse that control panel. And you're gonna see a very important uh, section called questions and chat. And so throughout the presentation tonight, if you have any questions for either Amy or Kristen, we encourage you to enter your question in that little little box and hit the enter key and it'll send it to us. And we will have several occasions throughout the night tonight where we'll be answering your questions. So throughout the presentation, if you have a question, we encourage you to ask it. That's what we're here for. Um, with that, the other thing that I would like to uh, talk about is just what we're gonna cover. So we're gonna obviously introduce ourselves and we're going to talk about um, your diversion options for yard waste. And then Kristen's going to walk us through the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation Backyard Rebate Program, where you can learn about composting uh, through an exciting program. We're also going to teach you about composting tonight, how to start composting at home. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about some other options you have. There are some food waste drop-offs available that you should know about. With that, I want to tell you a little bit about Swaco. Swaco is the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio. Uh, we are one of 52 solid waste management districts and authorities throughout 
Ohio, created by a law, created by Ohio law, we are required to develop and implement programs to divert waste from the landfill. If you do know of us, uh, you may know that we own the landfill. If you drive up or down 71 south of Columbus, you may see the landfill that's owned by Swaco, but we very importantly imp implement a lot of different programs that are designed to keep waste out of the landfill. These pictures on the screen that you see right now illustrate a number of them, certainly not all of them. Let me cover these real quickly, if I may. So the picture there of the blue recycling card on the upper left represents the fact that we have we work with all 41 communities in Franklin County uh, to help them develop and implement their waste diversion programs, such as their curbside recycling programs. We have a very exciting CART grant program that we've been offering for a couple years. Helps communities get recycling carts in the hands of their residents. So if you live in Reynoldsburg or Gahanna or Westerville or Bexley um, or Blended Township, you have a recycling cart that was partially funded through a grant program from Swaco. If you don't have curbside recycling, um, you also have options available at Swaco's recycling drop-off containers. The picture in the lower left-hand corner is three containers. Uh, there are 50 locations that have containers just like that. They are free to all residents in Franklin County. You can drop off your recycling uh, for free at those locations. We also have a couple contracts with uh, yard waste composting facilities in Franklin County. They will actually accept uh, yard waste for free from Franklin County residents. We'll talk about that a little, little bit later today. We have a program called the Environmental Crimes Task Force um, that we also want to make you aware of. If you witness open dumping or other environmental crimes, there is uh, a website uh, called itsacrime.org and there's a phone number that you can call. We sponsor that so that we can get those investigated and prosecuted. I'm just gonna to touch on three more. That picture of a, of a gasoline tank up there is representing the fact that we have a permanent household hazardous waste collection facility available to all residents in Franklin County. It's located on Essex Avenue near the fairgrounds. Uh, if you have, like we all do, uh, some things in your garage or in your basement, like um, oil-based paint, gasoline, old car batteries, pesticides, herbicides, pool chemicals, things like that. You know that they shouldn't go in the trash, but you're not sure where to take them. We have a permanent location that will accept those. And we have a couple mobile collection uh, events that we are actually going to be doing next week, uh, next week, next month, in um, one in Westerville and one in Grove City. Get on swaco.org website and you can find information about that. Two final things very quickly. We, we have over 4,000 students come down to visit the landfill every year as part of field trips and landfill tours that Amy Densborn, uh, who you will hear from here shortly, um, hosts. They learn a lot about waste diversion and recycling in addition to how a modern landfill operates. And finally, we have a container loan program. If you're a community or an organization that has a public event, and I know we're not having many of those in, this, in these days, but once we get back to normal and we have these public events, we have recycling containers in composting containers that you can borrow free of charge from Swaco so that your uh, participants in your public event have an opportunity to recycle. That's all I'm going to tell you about Swaco. Let's get into the presentation tonight. Amy, I think you're going to tell us a little bit about the waste stream and why it is important to compost what we can. Take it away. Thanks, Andrew. So as a community, residents and businesses alike, we're creating more waste every single year. Over the past several years, Central Ohio has been experiencing population growth and a booming economy. As more people move to Columbus, Ohio, more of that waste ends up in our local landfill. From a recent waste characterization study conducted by Swaco, the results showed that we're throwing away materials that could have been recovered through recycling or composting instead. In fact, 76% of the materials in the landfill don't belong there. This includes materials such as food waste, recyclable items, and other recoverable materials that had the potential to be reused. You may even be surprised to see that food waste is the number one contributor at 15% of the total waste stream. We have an amazing opportunity to increase recovery of these materials through increased access and education. Even though more waste is coming to the landfill, our rates of recycling and composting are increasing yearly. And the even better news is that more and more material is being diverted through reuse, recycling, and composting each year. 
In fact, in, in 2018, Franklin County reached an all-time record high of a diversion rate of 50%. That's pretty impressive considering the national average is right around 34%. At Swaco, we're working hard to build out diversion programs and provide grant funding to recover those materials and keep them out of the landfill. Swaco has established a long-term goal of reaching a 75% diversion rate by 2032. To reach that goal, we need to continue to work together towards a more sustainable future. As opposed to going into the landfill, organic waste can be returned to the environment in a beneficial way through composting. So properly disposing of organic waste, such as food scraps and yard waste, has several benefits. And we're just going to go over a few of them tonight. Um, you could find a lot more online, of course. We don't have time to go over every, every one of the, the aspects. So first and foremost, it saves landfill space. The less space we designate for landfills, the more land we have to use for other resources. Next up, it saves money on landfill tipping fees. So it costs money to dispose of waste at our local landfill. You can help save your community money by not putting organic waste in the trash can. Number three, it improves soil quality. Compost improves water retention, soil structure, and the ability for soil to store nutrients. Kristen is gonna go over this in a lot more detail here shortly. And then number four, it reduces the amount of greenhouse gases generated. A byproduct from the decomposition of organic materials is landfill gas. Landfill gas is comprised of carbon dioxide and methane gas. These are both powerful greenhouse gases. Suico safely captures this landfill gas and works with a private company to refine it into pipeline quality natural gas. Any land any landfill gas that can't be converted into natural gas goes to a flare to be safely burned off. Even though Swaco has gas has a gas management system in place to mitigate releasing greenhouses, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, it's still better for the planet to turn those organic materials into mulch or compost as a soil additive. So we first want to start off with some, some basics. Um, many of you are probably already composting and you didn't even realize it. Um, just by bagging up your leaves in the fall, you are participating in composting. Over 90% of the communities in Franklin County have access to curbside yard waste programs, making it easy and convenient for residents to make the right choice for the environment. If you have excess yard waste, you can always take your logs and branches to one of the many yard waste facilities throughout Columbus. We will go over those locations here in a few minutes. So yard waste should go in a biodegradable paper bag. Um, you can find these at most grocery stores and hardware stores. You can also clearly label a container yard waste um, and set it out on the curb for your pickup day. So for example, at my house, I converted an old cracked trash can into a yard waste bin and have saved myself tons of money and energy from purchasing those biodegradable bags from the store. Another option is to bundle your branches with a string or twine, making sure to trim them down to at least three feet by two feet wide bundles. Bundles and bags and containers cannot exceed 50 pounds. We really can't stress this enough. You only want to place organic waste in your yard waste bags or bins. Um, so please keep them free of things like plastic bags, plastic pots, plant labels, um, and food scraps. So our composting facilities here in Central Ohio don't have the capacity to process food scraps, and so they shouldn't go in our yard waste containers. So this is a really great reference guide to the do's and don'ts for Franklin County's curbside pickup program. And this is available on Swaco's website, swaco.org. Ask yourself this question, did this grow in my yard and was it alive at one point in time? I'm thinking ahead to my most favorite time of year, autumn, when all the leaves are falling off the trees and we spend our free time raking and bagging up those leaves to be collected by our local service department. A pro tip for you guys that are that are passionate composters out there, instead of giving all those hard earned raked leaves to the service department for to be turned into mulch, keep them as your carbon source and store them year round so you can add them to your compost system. 
And you may be wondering, but what if I cut back an overgrown tree on my property and I need to dispose of the tree quickly? Well, don't fear. There are other options available to Franklin County residents to ensure your yard waste isn't taking up precious space in the landfill. Consider taking your materials to one of the listed drop-off locations. All of these locations are listed on our website. If you're interested in learning more, go to swaco.org. We always encourage you to call ahead to each of these locations to ensure that they will accept your material and to make sure that there are no fees associated with the materials you plan to bring. All right, so now we're gonna take a pause um, to answer any questions that you guys might have regarding yard waste disposal. You know, Amy, I don't have a single question at this point. Okay. So everybody must be very clear about yard waste. Why don't we move on to the next topic? That sounds great. All right, so what about composting food scraps? Um, since our yard waste program in Central Ohio doesn't have the capacity to accept food scraps, we need to manage them in a different way. So there are several options here in Columbus for managing food scraps, and we're gonna help you figure out the best solution for your household. I'm gonna turn it over to Kristen Hilson from the Franklin Soil and Water Conservation District to share more about how you can start composting in your backyard and apply for the $50 rebate towards the cost of purchasing a compost system. I remember to unmute myself. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Hilson. As mentioned, I'm the Marketing and Public Outreach Coordinator for Franklin Soil and Water, um, but I'm also the Program Administrator for the Community Backyards Program that I'll be talking about tonight. If you haven't heard of Franklin, and Franklin Soil and Water, we are a subdivision of the state and one of 88 soil and water districts in Ohio. So every county has its own soil and water district. Our focus here is the uh, urban conservation, protection, and improvement of soil and water resources right here in Franklin County. So tonight I will be focusing on mostly backyard composting, um, but first I'm gonna give you some information on the Community Backyards Program in case you'll be interested to participate in that. It is an educational course, so we offer an online course. And way back in the day, we did in-person classes. Um, uh, but it goes over the use of rain barrels and rain gardens, native plants and trees in the landscape, backyard composting, and responsible lawn care. We also, as Amy mentioned, we offer the $50 rebates for residents who participate in the program and go to an, on to adapt one of these practices in their own backyard. Okay, so the goal, what is the goal of community backyards? It's not just to give away $50, even though that's a great bonus. Uh, it's actually um, to improve water and soil quality through backyard conservation practices. Uh, it's also about stormwater awareness here in Franklin County. Our goal is to keep rain where it fall falls on your property and instead use it as a resource to help keep our watersheds clean, healthy, and safe. And you might be asking like, why are we concerned about stormwater runoff? Uh, so this is a great graphic. It just kind of shows you your, maybe what your house is and what can enter a storm drain. Um, everything that enters a storm drain flows directly to the nearest body of water. There's no filter, there's no cleanup. Uh, everything it picks up along its path will end up in a local river or stream. So that could be dog waste, fertilizer, trash, leaves. Uh, that could be your own backyard or your favorite park that you like to visit. Another reason is that our systems really aren't equipped to handle large rain events um, that we've been having. So sometimes they can become overloaded, which create backups and overflows, um, which is just, you know, if you've ever had your basement flood after a large rainfall, you, you know why it's important. So the more we can do on our own property to help catch or slow down stormwater, the better. Okay, so it is trivia time before we get onto our next slide. So healthy soil serves as a filter and sponge for stormwater. When added to soil, compost can filter out what percentage of stormwater pollutants? 
All right, Kristen, let's see if we can get this poll, this poll up on the screen. There we go. There we go. As Kristen said, a healthy soil serves as a filter and sponge for stormwater. Composting when added to soil can filter out what percentage of pollutants. Click your screen uh, and put in your vote, and we'll give people a few seconds here. Um, got 30, 40 percent of people have voted. Good work, people. That number is. I think maybe we got what we're going to get. Looks like about 70% of people voted. Oh, good work. Get more coming in here. Let's give just another second or two, and then we will. Let's close the poll. How do we do? 50% of people said 52%. 41% of people said 60 to 95, and 30% of people said 7%. What is the right answer? So the right answer, which I'm glad most of you didn't say the 30%. The correct answer is actually 60 to 95%. Um, so that kind of leads into the next topic. And I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, like when you think of clean water, you might not think of soil or composting. Um, and you might even ask yourself, how does composting help with stormwater runoff? Um, but as the graphic shows, it's really all about the soil that's on our property. We want to create healthy soil that can act as a sponge to hold and filter stormwater. Um, I'm sure you're aware of Ohio soil. It can be very heavy, thick, and clay-like. So it makes it hard for plant roots to take hold and even harder for water to penetrate uh, and get through all of that. Amending the soil with organic matter over time will improve its structure and create space for air and water to move through. Um, which is extremely important in urban environments like ours. So runoff increases greatly in cities because of the impervious payment that we have, you know, because of the roads, the roofs, parking lots. Um, so we need good, healthy soil in our own yards to soak up the rainwater. Uh, why buy it when you can make it yourself and it can act like a natural forest? All right, so let's get down to composting at home, why you're all here. When a tree drops in the forest floor, it's not there a few weeks later. This is because the leaf naturally decomposes back into the soil, adding the nutrients back to the forest. It's just a natural cycle. As Amy mentioned earlier, we're wasting valuable resources by landfilling food scraps and yard waste. Composting is a quick, easy, and low-cost way to create healthy, nutrient-rich soil in as little as six to eight weeks. And the good news is really compostable material is all around you. Um, we're going to start with the browns, which is the carbon material, uh, which are, these can be fallen, dried leaves, pine needles, straw or hay, shredded paper, and even dryer lit. Uh, and then we have our greens, which is the nitrogen. This is going to be things like your grass clippings, food scraps, weeds that don't have seed, and even eggshells or coffee grounds. It's uh, important to kind of do, you know, take note of how much waste you have before you pick a compost bin. Um, this will help you kind of decide on the size of composter that will work for you or if you need to think outside the box and make one of your own. Okay, so let's talk about what goes into composting. I think people can get a little overwhelmed, um, but really everything, everything is compostable. Everything organic will compost. You'll see a lot of recommendations for the ideal ratio, and on average, the 30 to 70% split is on par but you don't need to be exact. And most importantly, you're gonna to have to give yourself time to see what works best for you and the type of composter that you chose. We do recommend covering up 
the nitrogen rich items like the food scraps with the dried out material um, just to help keep the chemistry aligned and then also prevent any you know smell as it decomposes. And then it's important to turn your pile. So that just helps um, when you're mixing the well-rotted materials with the fresh green material and the dry stuff with the wet stuff. Um, it just helps everything get kind of get going. How often you turn your pile is really up to you, um, but the more you are able to do it, the faster you'll get finished compost. If you do not get a good mix of brown and green materials, your compost pile might not get hot enough and take forever to break down. Um, and these issues can usually be remedied by tweaking the brown to green ratio. Um, and if you find that your compost pile isn't heating up, then you may need to add more green material to your compost. Um, you can check the temperature as this slide shows of your compost. But again, you know, you just kind of have to find what works, what works best for you um, and, and go with that. You know, if it's starting to smell, add more browns, like we said, or add more greens if you don't feel like you're getting compost fast enough. So like I've mentioned, you know, all organic matter will eventually decompose, but the art of composting just helps speed up this process. Most importantly, it's temperature, size, moisture, and atom items that kind of go into this mix of the perfect composting formula. What you want to do is, again, start with the size. This will depend on how much food and yard waste you produce. And then make sure your compost gets oxygen. I've seen some compost piles that they've added PVC pipe to help kind of with holes in it to add ventilation or you can just use an aerator that helps kind of turn everything. And more than likely, you don't need to add water to your compost pile, especially with the Ohio weather, but it is important to check it occasionally to get the best results. It should be as wet as a wrung out sponge. Um, and if you need to add some water, you can add, you know, your food scraps. That's like a, that's a water source, you know, that'll eventually break down. But again, there's no, exact science to composting. You just kind of start with the basics and go with what works best for you. Okay, so composting can be accomplished in many ways. With the support and partnership of Swaco and our municipal partners, we've been able to offer eligible residents the $50 rebate on compost bins. But for this program, we can only reimburse store-bought composters. Don't worry, it's not the only way you can compost. Uh, just for the program and get the $50 rebate. So this would include tumblers, on the ground systems that do require proper rodent protection, um, and now even vermicompost, which is the worm bins. All right, let's talk rodent proofing. Um, it is a requirement of the program, and I do hear it a lot, you know, like if I compost the right things, I shouldn't have a problem with rodents. And that's technically true, but if they're hungry or cold enough, a compost pile is like a nice, cozy, all-you-can-eat buffet for them. Um, for on-the-ground compost bins and the do-it-yourself options that we'll get to next, it's extremely important to have the rodent-proof bottoms. Most on the ground systems don't come with a bottom, they're open. So you'll kind of need a DIY one. Um, I've personally seen the most two popular choices be the heavy galvanized hardware cloth and they'll just kind of secure it to the bottom with you know, heavy duty staples or, or even nails. Um, or if you're one for aesthetics, you can go for concrete blocks or patio stones for a base because rodents aren't gonna be able to burrow up underneath that. All right, so now we'll get to the creative and do-it-yourself options. I personally love these, um, but I do want to reiterate that they're not eligible for the community backyards rebate. Um, but it's, they're a great idea if you need more space for composting, and if you're pretty handy, this might be an option for you. So I personally love 
the top two photos, the wooden plank setup with the dual or triple bins. I think this system works. Um, you can get one side going, and then in six months, you can switch to the other side and kind of flip back and forth and have compost, you know, two compost piles going at the same time. Uh, I live out in the country, so I have a lot of yard waste. So a system like this kind of works best for me because I need more space than what a tumbler can offer. And then in case you don't want to use wood, um, we do have some stone options for you. Uh, cylinder blocks work, bricks work. Um, so I just want to point out again, I, I think that it's really important to have a lid on any of the do-it-yourself concrete uh, options. Um, and of course, the rodent-proof bottom. So if you do go this route, kind of that photo in the left-hand corner um, that has the lid and the, the bottom right-hand corner, those are probably, for these options, the two best choices that I would recommend if you are gonna do it yourself. Um, and then also, if any of you know how to make that awesome composter in the middle, please contact me, because it's beautiful. <laughs> I might want one of those. All right, so the last do-it-yourself composting option I'll be discussing is the open space technique. So this is a really great idea for somebody with a lot of property or somebody with a lot of trees. You know, like we said, everything breaks, organic breaks down. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. Um, for open space composting, we do not recommend adding any food waste. You're just kind of inviting all of those critters into it. Keep it strictly for yard waste, maybe for pumpkins, as you can tell in that, in that photo, I'm not sure. But uh, it will probably take longer to decompose, but you know, you can go out there and turn it with a pitchfork with the right temperature. It'll naturally break down and you'll get compost eventually. <laughs> but it's still a great way to keep the yard waste out of the landfills, which you know we have now have a high, pretty high percentage of. Okay, and then this is kind of a new thing that we've been able to offer in community backyards, the vermicompost rebates. Um, this was with Swaco support, we've been able to kind of offer the reimbursements on that program. I myself am not a vermicomposter, so I'm gonna hand it over to Amy who is, and uh, she's gonna take you through the basics of worm composting. Thank you, Kristen. So we can compost with, with the help of our little friend, the red wiggler worm. So this is a great system for those who live in an apartment and have limited space and don't generate a lot of organic waste from a yard. I think I'm getting some feedback. You guys hear that? No? Okay. Um, so it's also a huge hit with kids and a great way to get them involved in the decomposition process. So we recommend starting with one pound of red wiggler worms. You can get these from the City Folk Farm Shop in Clintonville or, or order them online. So one pound of red wiggler worms can consume about three and a half pounds of food scraps a week. You don't want to give them all three and a half pounds in one day, spread it out throughout the week but they really don't care for spicy foods or acidic type of foods like citrus peels. So just like with other compost systems that we've talked about tonight, um, you really wanna steer clear from, the, from meat products and dairy products as that could actually um, cause an imbalance in the bin and then the smell could attract insects. So worms can be a little picky when it comes to the moisture contents and the temperature of their habitat. Since worms breathe through their skin, they require moisture in the bin, but not an overabundance of moisture. So you're shooting for the moisture of the content of a wrung out sponge, just like with the other compost systems. Whenever you do add your, fruit, your, your um, food scraps, you wanna also add an additional carbon source. This is their bedding. So they like things like shredded paper, shredded cardboard, and dry leaves. The bedding allows um, proper airflow and ventilation, and it also discourages the smells. The smaller the pieces, the smaller the food scraps, the smaller the, the carbon sources and the bedding, the more palatable the pieces will be for the worms to digest. So worms will also eat the bedding along with food scraps. 
Worms need a regulated temperature between 55 and 80 degrees. So consider putting them in a basement or under a table where they can be kept in the dark. Garages are okay during the milder months, but they will not survive the freezing temperatures or extreme heat that we have here in Ohio. So some basic steps to get your bin started. So you wanna fill an opaque dark ventilated bin with a third to half full with moist, but not dripping, cardboard or newspaper as their bedding. Place the red wiggler worms in the middle of the bedding and then cover with your, and then cover the up with a lid. Set the worms and the, and the bedding in a place that is about 55 to 80, 80 degrees for a week and just let them be, let them acclimate to the new home. After a week, start adding those food scraps. So remember up to three and a half pounds for each one pound of worms. You wanna make sure every time you're adding those food scraps, you're layering in with the browns, just like you would normally do in compost. So you can harvest the castings, that's just a fancy way of saying worm poop, every two to six months. So really when the material starts to smell earthy and kind of woody, that's when you know it's ready to be harvested. The easiest way that I can recommend to you to harvest the castings is to move all of the um, old material to one side of the bed. So all the castings, all the bedding over to the one half of the bed. And then on the new, on the, on the empty side of the bin, add new scraps, new food scraps and bedding, and the worms will naturally migrate over to the new, new food scraps. And then that way you can save your worms for your second uh, worm bin, and then you can harvest all the castings um, and then put them in your garden or your, um, your pots, whatever you want to use them for, or give them to a friend even. And one of my pro tips that I, I learned from someone else who's been uh, vermicomposting for many years is for less stink, freeze your scraps throughout the week and then thaw them overnight before placing them in the bin. So um, my worms love melons and fruit. So I try to give them all the rinds from our melons, which we've, we've been really enjoying cantaloupe this summer. So I wanted to show you guys a just real quickly what it looks like because it's it's portable and I can kind of move it around. Um, I'm going to show you this is what the finished product looks like. It very much just looks like soil or dirt. Um, all the worms are hiding in the bottom. So I'm going to dig a few of them out to show you what they look like. They are not your typical um, earthworms. They're not very. They're not near as big in size, and they do have a a red color. Um, so they will repopulate on their own. You don't have to buy new worms once you, you put that first pound in. They will take care of it for yourself. And then if you want to, you know, divide and, and spread the joy to someone else, you can also do that because there will eventually get to be a point where you have too many worms for your bed. So this, these are the castings that I've had in my bed for the past few months. These are ready to be harvested. I'm not quite ready to harvest all of them, so I'm going to keep um, I'm going to keep them in the bin. And then I did want to show you guys what my bin looks like. There are multiple different methods to do this. You can honestly just convert a dark container, a dark tote, put some holes in the top to make sure that they have ventilation, um, and then put it somewhere dark because they don't like the light. So. This is the inside of the bin. It doesn't have a smell whatsoever. Um, if anything, it just smells like soil. You can see on the top of the bin, I have lots of shredded paper. Um, and, the, and the paper has, it, it's a little damp, but it's not, it's not saturated by any means. So if we, if we dig back a little bit, we can, see, you guys probably have a hard time seeing down in the very bottom, but all the worms are hiding underneath the bedding. Um, so they're that they're down below um, enjoying their habitat, enjoying munching on that cantaloupe that I put in there recently. I have about three inches thick of finished castings and this is from about two months of um, having an active bin. I do not add three and a half pounds of scraps a week. I probably do like a half a pound a week because I also do a compost tumbler as well. So I give them 
um, a little bit here and there, but they don't get as much activity as the compost tumbler at my house. All right, so now we're gonna take a pause to answer any of your guys' questions relative to the backyard rebate program or composting at home. You know, this is about the quietest group we've had, Amy and Kristen, <laughs> uh, on any of our presentations. So um, there have been a couple of questions that uh, like related to some of the audio and things like that, but let me just take a quick uh scan here I, i'm getting a few more so if you could repeat one question we got here is where can where um can somebody get worms if they're interested in doing vermicompost yeah so you're looking for a red wiggler worms um, these can be purchased at the city folk farm shop that's in clintonville and then you can also order them online so you can order them off amazon um, again, you can. There's other places online that you can order order them from. Just make sure you're looking. You're purchasing red wiggler worms. Thank you. I've got one for Kristen too. Yeah, Kristen, if somebody is interested in signing up for the backyard um, program, um, where, what website do they go to? So they can go to uh, communitybackyards.org. There is an online course and quiz that they can do that's open um you know what i'd like to kind of offer for the attendees of the um presentation tonight though is that if they're interested in a compost bin reimbursement specifically um this is the same information that we go over in the online course and quiz so if they'd like to reach out to me by email or reach out to your staff and send me their personal information i'd be happy to send them a voucher for a compost bin since they attended this evening that's, that's excellent. Um, I've got a question uh, from Stephen who asks about eggshells. Can they go into compost? If so, do they need to be crushed? I'll, I'll put that to both of you. They do. Um, so, you know, I, I would recommend to crush them um, as fine as you can. You'll probably still see them a little bit in your compost just because it, it will take longer to fully break down, but it's absolutely okay to put them in your compost pile. I have a question if uh, if I live in an apartment complex um, what size what kind of composting bin would you recommend so and maybe we can flip back up to those pictures because I know there's one that that Amy would recommend I think uh, and for small yards and people that are in, in so um, for the apartment dweller um, if you do have a um, some sort of deck or, or patio, small. Um, you could do a compost tumbler. Um, some of those can be, uh, you know, relatively small. Uh, not, you know, not a lot of. Not doesn't take up a lot of space on the on the surface area of your patio. You can also try vermi composting too. Um, like I said, this can go, um, you know, in a in a cabinet. It can go underneath the table, um, somewhere dark. It can go in the basement. Um, it doesn't have to be out in the open for everyone to see. Um, they like it dark. They don't, they like the temperatures to be regulated. So if, as an apartment dweller, you probably don't have a lot of yard waste that you're generating. And so you could, you could use a smaller system like a compost tumbler, one of these um, bins that we have on this picture here, or even a vermi composting bin with worms. Yeah, I agree. The, and the, single bin tumblers are really you know if they're not full you can easily move them around so it kind of works within your space i have another question about what can go in your compost um how about corn cobs That's absolutely yeah <laughs> throw them in corn cobs i've got about 15 in my compost tumbler right now they're breaking down <laughs> now, Amy, do you cut them whole or do you cut them up? You know, I do them whole um, because I just figure it's, it's not a big deal to me. I'm going to put them all in my garden, um, you know, after everything is kind of broken down. And once I add them to my garden, they'll be really, really soft and they'll be really easy for me, me to take the shovel and then just kind of, you know, break them down even further. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that they might help get everything turning too as it, as it goes, add some weight to your compost. but. 
let's talk about just for a minute. Uh, you know, we've got some questions about some maybe uh, unusual food items or things that might seem like they take longer to break down. So that it, you've you've talked about this, but just talk a little bit more about some things like corn cobs or maybe an avocado peel or different things like different things have different rates of decomposition. So as you put in your different things into your compost, I think that you can expect that some things are going to decompose very quickly and some things are just going to take a little bit longer and that's fine. Am, am I right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Andrew. Go ahead, it's Kristen. Certain things, it's, um, you know, if you can chop it down or, you know, shred it, that, that's just going to help speed up the process, but uh, you don't have to. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, and I still have eggshells from compost that I harvested over a year ago in my garden. Um, they periodically pop up, little remnants of them. But, you know, the calcium is, is great for the gar garden. It's an additional... Um, nutrient that a lot of plants do require and it saves me a lot of money on fertilizers um, that I don't have to add to my garden. I have okra this year that is almost eight feet tall. I mean they will not stop growing and so um, I have to say that there's some really good things going on in that in the um, compost. Let's talk about um, what we might call rookie mistakes. So people get excited about composting and maybe haven't taken a course or haven't read too much about it and sometimes I'll hear stories about things that people put in that really shouldn't go into their compost. So what, give me one or two things that you would say, just remember, don't put this in your compost, your backyard compost. Kristen, I'll let you take that one away. Um, well, I mean, I think I'll, I'm just going to point out weeds with seeds, right? So I would say that's kind of the number one because it's really easy to just pull those bad boys out of the yard and and throw them in your yard waste container and dump it. But if they do have seeds, um, let, you know, remove those or let them drive out and die before you kind of add them to your compost pile. Otherwise, you're just going to be dealing with um, trying to stay on, you know, get back on top of that overtaking, possibly growing out of your compost. Um, and then I think another one is that, you know, we do like, you can add certain animal manure to your compost pile but you shouldn't add cat dog waste or kitty litter so kind of make that reference I, I mean again i live out in the country so i know i have a lot of people that use that in their fields so horse manure are things that eat very natural diets can absolutely be added um, but not the the cat or the dog waste I think those are great. I think those are two pre the two most common things. So even for somebody who's an avid composter in their backyard, I'm still taking advantage of the curbside, curbside collection using those yard waste band bags for the dandelions and the thistles and those things that I ultimately really don't want coming back into my garden. Um, I have a couple other, I think, really good questions. So if you've got some things in your compost, like maybe little bits of eggshell or um little seeds little you know cherry pits or something like that and those are still intact in your compost will that harm your plants the seed ones um i'm not sure about the seeds what do you think amy i wouldn't think so i mean um i would bury them in the in the in the soil and i would think it would be fine i mean i do have avocado pits that are finally starting to break down i think that's a really good example of something that's you know thick and sturdy and they are finally starting to crumble apart and so it's taken them maybe a year or two but i i do see them finally starting to uh crumble and, and become smaller so i think you just have to be cautious when you're when you're har harvesting the compost that you're not like dumping it on your already established plants, that you're you know, being very careful about where you place the compost and you're making sure it's on, on top of the soil, not on top of the plants per se. Yeah, and I saw I would, one pineapple tops. I just wanna say that you probably you can do, but I have two pineapple plants growing at my house. You can also just root those bad boys and plant them as a really pretty plant. <laughs> huh. Good idea. That is a good idea. I was also going to say that when you harvest the compost, is that that's a good time. It takes a little bit of attention, but that's a good time when you can kind of separate the really nice, mature compost, and you can kind of leave some of that stuff in your compost bin 
or pile to continue to degrade. Um, and so when you see those avocado pits and other things, you can just leave them for more time, they take more time. Um, I do I another- Oh, I'm so sorry. I think that's why a lot of people like um, the on the ground systems because you put everything on top and then as everything breaks down, the compost really ends up at the bottom. So it's kind of easier for people to get to the compost. Um, with the tumblers, you, you know, you keep going and then it's kind of the same, you know, open it from the bottom and hopefully you should be able to get the compost. I have one final question that I think we should cover. Um, Adrian asks, if I don't have a lot of leaves, what other recommendations do you have for the brown material? Toilet paper and paper towel rolls. Yep, uh, newspaper, um, shredded cardboard. Um, what, uh, a trick I learned off the internet uh, a couple years back is um, pine bedding for horses. So if you go to Tractor Supply Plus, you can get a, a like 10 pound bag of, um, maybe it's a 20 pounds bag of pine pellets. Um, there's no additional chemicals or additives. Um, those pine pellets are super easy to just transfer into your um, compost bin. And then they just start, they crumble apart very quickly too. And it's five bucks. Um, it's hard for me, to, I have a small yard, I don't have a lot of trees. It's hard for me to collect and stockpile the, enough leaves for my entire year's worth of compost carbon sources. So that's my trick. There's tractor supply um, stores, you know, they're not everywhere, but there's a few in Columbus that you could, um, you could go to and pick up one of those bags, five bucks. I think it's worth it. The other final thing I'll say is that as Kristen said very early on, it's this kind of, this interesting combination of, um, brown materials, carbon sources, nitrogen materials, green sources, oxygen, and, and water. And so sometimes um, if you don't have as much carbon, if you spend a little bit more time turning your tumbler or poking and prodding it to get a little bit more oxygen in there, um, that, can, that can help keep it in balance, even if you don't have maybe the ideal amount of carbon. Let's uh, move on. We do have a, just a couple more slides that we want to cover, and then by all means, I'm getting a lot of good questions, so keep them keep them coming. All right. So we do understand not everyone has the time or energy to compost all their organic waste generated at their household. This is why Swaco is striving to make composting easy and convenient, so more people have access to the environmental benefits of composting. Many central Ohio communities have implemented residential food waste, food waste drop-off programs, uh, most with the help of Swaco's Community Waste Reduction Grant. That grant cycle is active right now for those who are interested in applying. Um, grant applications are due by 5 p.m. on September 11th, so um, please re reach out to one of our grant administrators to learn more about the program and um, see if you qualify. So if you live in one of these listed communities um, on this slide, please call your local service department to learn more about the program and how you can sign up. If you don't live in a community that already has a designated food waste drop-off location, you might be interested in subscribing to a service that can handle all your food scraps from your house or business. That even includes meat and dairy products, which we cannot place in our backyard compost tumbler, since the smell will likely attract rodents and other critters that we don't want in our compost. Since some people, some people even go as far as to compost their organic materials in their backyard composter, and then take all their meat and dairy and processed foods, um, those kinds of scraps to a commercial compost facility so they don't have to throw away any materials that might generate greenhouse gases in their trash can. So we're really lucky to have four different options when it comes to collecting our food scraps in Central Ohio. Each company has a different business model. Some providers service, um, service the commercial sector, so places like restaurants and schools, while others focus more on residential collection. We really encourage you to reach out to each company to learn more about their costs um, associated with their service. So the majority of our time tonight um, has been spent discussing ways to compost our food scraps and other organic waste. But really food waste prevention and food waste reduction also includes preventing food waste altogether. That includes eating the food that we buy and only buying the food that we can eat. 
When food is landfilled, instead of being eaten, we lose the natural resources, money, and the opportunity to feed hungry members of our community. On September 15th, Swaco and the Central Ohio Food Waste Initiative will be launching the Save More Than Food Awareness Campaign. This is gonna be a website um, that is focused on providing resources on how we can prevent, reduce, and recycle food waste at home, school, and our places of work. Together, we can make a difference. So that concludes the presentation. Um, if we have any other questions, we can um, go ahead and take them now. What do you think, Andrew? Well, I'm taking a quick look here. I don't see any more. We've got just a few more minutes, folks. If you have any questions about anything that we covered tonight, we would be happy to answer them. Kristen, Swick, Kristen Amy, or myself, um, whether it's composting, vermicomposting, your yard waste collection service, uh, or even the Save More Than Food campaign. So let's just give folks maybe one more minute here. I don't see any additional questions. Um, I would like to thank everybody for participating tonight on this beautiful Thursday evening. 30 of us, 35 of us maybe joined uh, tonight and uh, learned a little bit more about composting. Uh, we do this every month. Uh, our, next, uh, our next webinar, we will be focused on um, the Environmental Crime, Crimes Task Force and, and how people can help prevent environmental crimes in Franklin County. We'll get some more information on our website about that soon. Um, and we're always looking for ideas. So if there are other topics that you would like to see us cover, I would encourage you to send us an email at info at swaco.org. And with that, I think we're, it's time to say good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone.